Welcome back and thank you very much for your time here on TV3 New Day. Join us on WhatsApp 020216 That's our WhatsApp line. Again, 020216 The Daily Graphic starts us off. It says 20 die in Upper East Floods. Their toll could rise. Uh, that's what is feared now. Supreme Court refuses Wyoming's payment plan and special prosecutor AG to retrieve 47.3 million euros debt from Waterville. Rail parts ransacked in Asankari. The Daily Guide. Wyoming is bankrupt. Supreme Court slams final hammer in a 46 million um, Ghana cities debt. Amidu, AG, AG clash over 47 million uh, Euro Waterville debt and Akufuado affirms ICC commitment. The business finder thumbs up for Ghana's economy. Fitch says debt to GDP will fall over the long term. Ghana's international reserve saw and Chamber of Mines initiate two million tertiary education fund. The Ghanaian Times state to sell Wyoming's property as Supreme Court throws out stay of execution case and Ghana to pass law to deal with international crime, government to focus on science, mathematics, technology, education, according to President Ekufuado. Two robbers um, arrested for after shootout with police. 20 die, 19 injured as torrential rains pound Upper East. 120, 1,250, 25 houses uh, have collapsed since then. We're told it happened under Bosa assault area. My, my guest this morning, Mr. Eric Chum. He's a member of the NPP's communication team and also Comrade Mutala Mohammed, who is in the uh, Tamale Central North seat on the ticket of the NDC, and he hopes to win it. Gentlemen, Thank welcome. Thank you. Thank How's you. it good going? Morning. Thursday morning. So far, so good. Comrade, how are the grounds? How's the grounds? Is it, uh, is it clean? Is it safe? Inshallah, we are on. Mm. You're on? <laughs> yes. The waters are calm. Yeah. Everything Inshallah. is okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. Eric, how are you? Uh, I'm doing well. Um, good morning to yourself. Good morning to Mutala. And the yes, Eric, 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 you have interest too, don't you? Yes. I have. You have interest too. I have a lot of interest. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of interest. <laughs> uh, okay, I, maybe. You're a contestant. I have a lot of interest. Yes, so let, let's hear your interest because Mutala has made his clear. Well, let's, I mean. Let's uh, hear your interest. You know, I am a consummate. Uh, uh, if you like, Democrat. Mm -hmm. And so I'll wait till the party officially announces that we can proceed to campaign. Mm -hmm. But of course, I mean, I think it's an open secret that I have interest in um, Fantiakwa South constituency right. when the party actually gives us the green light to go out there and, mm -hmm. and campaign. So that's a set. Okay, but Fantiakwa. this morning, Fantiakwa, uh, you have you have a fine MP waiting for you, so uh, <laughs> do the need for. Thank you, thanks yes. for the endorsement. You, no, no, of, of course, I mean. Fantiakwa is <laughs> Fantiakwa <is> strongest. <laughs> yes, well, Eric. This morning, uh, mm. it's a sober one for me. Um, my very very good friend, actually childhood friend, uh, lost his wife. Oh, so sorry, sorry. Um, the funeral is this morning. Sorry about uh, that. So I'll take this opportunity to wish him and the family mm. uh, the, my deepest condolences. And okay. uh, I'm sure that the good Lord would uh, mm -hmm. keep her in his bosom. Mm. Uh, it's down to the same old cancer, which is the breast cancer that has been oh. uh, a big conversation in the last month or so. So I'll also use it to urge that we need to increase the education Mm -hmm. and make sure that people and it's not even just women I hear that yeah, even for too. us as men we have to uh, take a cue and have ourselves checked thank you thank you very much but, uh, you want to say something well quickly? I can only extend my deepest and profound condolences to mm. the friend for the loss of the wife mm. and when I lost my mom I, I couldn't imagine how the pain was my understanding is that those who have experienced both, who have lost mm -hmm. their mothers and lost their wives, I'm told that is another most devastating, mm -hmm. you know, or painful thing that one can go through. We would love and wish that we live with our wives for several years and perhaps God calls you the same day. But life as it is naturally 
we would all go at mm. at some point in time. Mm. So I can only express my condolences to okay to the brief family and more especially to your friend. Mm. Okay. Yesterday, the Supreme Court ruled it shut down uh, Mr. Martin Amidu because he had earlier requested that he, he wants to have a payment plan to give us back our Mr. money. Martin Amidu. Uh, sorry, uh, William, mm. uh, that he wants <laughs> to give us back, back our money. Um, and the special prosecutor was in disagreement largely because he says, look, the Attorney General is not cooperating for us to retrieve this money. And the Supreme Court <coughs> perhaps listened to him and said that, look, Mr. William, you had come here earlier to say you will pay, you have a payment plan. We gave you the payment plan and you didn't abide by it. So we do not see the need to give you another payment plan. And it is feared that his, uh, his property will be sold to defray the cost. Mr. I'll start with you on this one. Uh, your thoughts? Well, let me say good morning to you, my friend, and of course, the good people of Tamale Central. Uh, I think that this is, is fine. Mm. Mind you, the issue of Woyomi prosecution was done by the NDC. Okay. The NDC started the prosecution and virtually concluded with the pro prosecution. In fact, the, the, the only thing that was left before we had the elections was the judgment. Okay. So clearly, in terms of government making a forceful <coughs> case through mm. the Ministry of Justice and Attorney General to ensure that monies that were unjustifiably mm -hmm. taken you know, from the state were mm. retrieved. And as they say, the, the law at any point in time ought to be respected. Okay. Whatever Mr. Ma uh, Wayumi was engaged in, you know, could not be seen as something that was mm. to frustrate, even if that was his intention. Mm. But the wheels of the law grants, it grants slowly. Mm. But at the end of the day, there will be a final determination right. as to what the issues are. Mm -hmm. And I think that once we the the laws allowed him and gave him the right to engage in some of the things he engaged in mm -hmm. i think that we all need to respect it the final decision certainly will be taken mm -hmm. by the supreme court as pronounced by by the justice okay. on that particular case mm -hmm. that he's been given this some opportunity but when he's been given some opportunity because his lawyers argued a b c d mm -hmm. but here's the case they could no longer take those you know excuses again okay. and therefore his properties ought to be sold mm -hmm. but that is not even conclusion he what? can still challenge okay. even the decision he can go mm -hmm. for a review of that particular decision i thought and he I went to the ECOWAS court and got back <coughs> yes the ECOWAS court they said no once you you see and and not even a practicing lawyer you ought to have known that before you can go to an international, you know, body such as the court, mm -hmm. you need to exhaust, if you like, the legal, you know, internal, internal, internal legal, legal, you know, uh, opportunities. You know, opportunities. And, and I, I guess that was what made them come to the conclusion mm -hmm. that he needed to go back to Ghana. There wasn't, his view was that he was being unfairly treated, he was being unjustifiably treated mm -hmm. because of certain <coughs> actions and inactions of the executive government at the time. So what do I have to say then mm -hmm. to see that it is the will and the interest of everybody in this country, not just Mr. Martin Amiru. Mm -hmm. It was in the larger interest of the NDC to insist that the money is paid. Mind mm -hmm. you, that contract or the so-called contract was not executed under the NDC. Okay. It was executed when President Kufo was there. And for which reason, some judgments were, some payments were made. Mm. You know, and it is also, we also need to be very clear. Judgment debt in itself is not an illegality. When there is a breach of a contractual agreement mm. that you fail to honor what you are supposed to do, it comes with some consequence, mm. uh, consequences. And I think that this was one. So let's be very clear. Judgment debt payment loan is not but, but where, where One, they, there is some justification. But where the, the former president, bless his soul, Professor Mill says, don't pay the money and, and you have government officials go ahead to pay the money. That's worrying. So that was the reason why the same NDC went to court and insisting that such money is not be paid. I remember even when President Mahama became the president, the MPP used judgment that against Prof Mills when President Mahama became president, they virtually hung his neck, you know, with that when they knew he had absolutely nothing to do with with the payment of the judgment mm. to him. It became a political football field mm. that anybody could take advantage of. And I thought that issues like that, we need to look at it holistically and nationalistically mm. as a people, <laughs> that there is a private entity who thinks that he's justified to be made some payments to. 
and those payments were made. Granted that the payments that were advanced to him mm -hmm. were illegal, mm -hmm. which I believe that has been determined by the courts. Right. He ought to pay. And that was the reason why the NDC gov government took the gentleman to court. And I would repeat that all the processes, the determination and the conclusion that the court arrived at were all done before we had the 2016 election. So just left with the judgment. Of course, a new government comes. You'll ensure that we have some of these monies, you know, retrieved. But I just want to say that judgment, payment of judgment debt alone is not an illegality. If you have a contractual agreement with either a private or international entity, and for some reason you breach those contractual obligations, it can come with some payment of judgment. But, but why should we sit and wait for it to go bad because before we, if we, if we uh, make an offer, there's consideration acceptance. Do you know the Kelly, that fraudulent Kelly, Kelly, whatever? Kelly GVG. GVG that has been signed. Have you seen the clauses in them? Now, despicable as those arrangements were made by official them, by the Ministry of Communication. A new government comes, or even this government decides that we are no longer going to go with that agreement and therefore we're going to you know, abrogate mm -hmm. the agreement. We may be slapped with judgment. That, right. and, and I think that sometimes the conduct of, of officials, mm -hmm. those taxed with the responsibility to man the affairs of the state, mm -hmm. these are some of the issues that I think that we need to. Let's also get something very clear. One, there is a contract that has been entered into. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need to execute the contract for the justification for a judgment that to be paid. Once I have a contractual agreement with you and I have depended on the clauses in that contract mm -hmm. and have made some initial expenses and you breached the the the, the agreement, mm -hmm. I can go to court. There, there should the be court exit clauses in the contract. Uh -huh. So these are some of, some of the exit clauses you see them were just unacceptable. Take, have you gone through the Kelly GVJ right. agreement? Mm -hmm. Considering the fact that we are paying those huge sums of money mm -hmm. for no any reason and no any cyber, cyber security. <laughs> you don't see cyber security. Which cyber security? When you have the 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 the, the what's the name the the organization? You, you remember the oh, organization okay. that works with with the who are taxed with the responsibility of ensuring that either our radio stations and NCA. NC and other, when you have them that some of them have the capacity to, to do some of the things they are doing, when you want to enter into an arrangement for, for which monies are going to be expended, you need to have thought very well what will be the return. Okay. What, are, what do we stand to gain as a result of that? Mm -hmm. But when you realize that the return is less as compared to the expenses you're going to incur in it, it simply doesn't make sense for you to get engaged in such. And that is a classical example we have with the Kelly Froland GVG. Okay, I hear you. Eric, <laughs> finally, uh, <laughs> we're going Mutala, to get our money what? back, aren't we? Mutala is... Uh, <laughs> Master, make this is a classic. He's classic, your good friend. So eh? Make your NDC. comments <laughs> and forget of me. Uh, you see, allow, come, allow him. Classic <laughs> NDC. Come. He's not very quiet when he was speaking. Yeah. You know, I would have wished that he didn't even go there. Um, and the topic on the table really is about what you William mean, right? And the fact that the Supreme Court have just made another determination yeah. regarding the fact that uh, this whole <coughs> allowing him to use. To, to, to have some time to pay an installment is mm -hmm. something that they, they don't think that yeah. is feasible, especially when uh, that opportunity has been given before. Mm -hmm. And so that is a determination. And so Mutala decided not to take responsibility for mm -hmm. the whole Wyoming saga, which was essentially the classic example of the, uh, the famous court, Great mm -hmm. Loot and Share. Mm -hmm that has come to become part oh, of really? the uh, lexicon <laughs> in this country. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, so mm -hmm. for me, I think that, you see, when these things happen, mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, situate it in, the, in this context and say that issues to do with Wyoming, for instance, I mean, he was talking about the fact that there's a contractual agreement and all mm -hmm. those things. However, Mr. Woyome himself has gone on record to say that he had absolutely no contract. I didn't say that. <laughs> he I didn't say that. Like, I was quiet. No, but, just, but, but I didn't. Just make, I didn't okay, he, 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 he yeah, said, he said that the, me, contra me. the contract was under the MPP regime, but the contract was not even executed. Okay, but like, no, can, no, I, can, I, can I go on? Unfortunately, the reason why I have to make this intervention, you see, when we are having an intellectual discourse, I talked about, I talked about the fact that 
yes, something has been done. This is what we're all Johnny, doing for. Johnny, I but, think but then, to add anything. But, but, me, but no, no, you see, me, you, are, me, you are misrepresenting uh, me. Uh, uh, no, you see, you see, 30 seconds. When, when I talked about the con, I said, judgment debt per se. Okay. It's not an illegal. It's I wasn't yeah. making that statement. Right. Okay. I'm referring okay. to a specific right. issue. Okay. Thank you very much. So very don't for misrepresent you. Yes. as yes. usual. But you see, it's very uh, <laughs> instructive that we look at this thing from a perspective of even a, the, the whole tenets of democracy thing. I mean, where Mr. Woyomi, as a citizen of this country, mm -hmm. has almost exhausted all the various uh, legal processes mm -hmm. that is uh, available to him so that it's not as if that we live in a country where once you're accused of doing something you mm -hmm. can just be uh, dumped into a uh, prison or tied at a stake and shot and mm -hmm. all of those things so for mm -hmm. me I think that on that particular score I, I like that mm -hmm. we've gone through the processes where uh, a legal regime mm -hmm. has held sway rather than what uh, used to be the, the status quo in the mm -hmm. past but you see, this whole Wyoming matter is as a result of a couple of things. One, okay. it's on record that uh, the late Professor Mills was uh, emphatic that money should not be paid to Mr. Wyoming. Right. And they still went ahead and paid. Mm. It was on record that he got <coughs> um, advice, mm. proper legal advice from his uh, attorney general at the time. Mm. It's also on record that there's a gentleman who was I think a state attorney at the auditor, uh, attorney, attorney general's Jerry's department, department who there's evidence of money is being transferred to him and all that. I think there's a certain Nekwe and all of those things. Now, all of these things have transpired. And we've gotten to the point where Ghanaian people are saying that, where is the money? The money. Right. Especially when within, like, and he stated that even within the whole, the NDC itself, they started some processes to retrieve the money because it's on record that the man did not have a contract with mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. And the monies were actually paid to him without recourse to one the instructions that had been given by mm -hmm. the late Professor Mills. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, if you go through the process, you realize that the Attorney General actually refused to make an appearance when judgment was actually given. And even when the judgment was given, it's also stated categorically that a certain amount of money should be paid, held in, uh, in, in trust somewhere mm -hmm. until a determination of the matter. I remember, if I remember correctly, it was about 17 million or so mm -hmm. should be paid. They went up ahead and paid the full amount and came back with justifications. So for me, I think that, well, this thing has gotten to the point where uh, it had to take the uh, assistance of the Attorney General and the, uh, the legal processes for us to get to this point. Okay. Now, I mean, the story actually says that Mr. Wodemi is actually bankrupt, which means that really he doesn't have the resources or the money to pay the state. Mm. And the instruction now that has been given is that his assets should be uh, liquidated exactly. to actually... El earlier, it. UT Bank had said that uh, some of the properties belong to them, but... The Supreme Court will now find out that the properties actually belong to Mr. Woyomi and has ordered for them to be sold. Well, so I mean, all of those things are important. But I think that for us as a country, these are some of the things that sometimes it might come across as, I mean, justice is the, the wheels of justice mm. grind grinding sl slowly. slowly. Mm. But it, it does eventually come to uh, some kind of finality. Mm. And we'll go through the processes. It becomes also a lesson to... Uh, people who find themselves in uh, public office right. in terms of uh, these contracts and how you're mm. able to uh, make sure that you don't put the state into a state where we will now be paying all these huge amounts of judgment debts and all of those things. Mm. Like he said, the principle of judgment debts in itself is not wrong because we do a lot of business with local indigenous businesses, with international businesses, uh, international partners and both multilateral mm. and bilateral ag arrangements and all of those things. So for those entities, they would want to have some kind of comfort that mm. even when we go through a certain contractual arrangement and it's breached, there's a certain uh, recourse right. to us. And mm. so for me, I see nothing wrong with that. It is the almost deliberate attempt mm. where things are put together and it's, it's contrived to create a situation that 
government owes these entities. That is wrong. And so I don't think that in principle, especially for people who are uh, lawyers or mm. corporate governance experts would say that in principle, if an, a, a contract mm. so is breached, you can't go and actually seek some kind of redress. But if you go through this whole process, okay. it's a process that, as far as I'm concerned, this whole idea of money is being paid to Wyoming should have happened in the first place. If state officials were up and doing and were if not uh, sleeping on the job mm. and not negligent. Mm. I mean, as we speak, I haven't had one tangible excuse or reason why the state did not make an appearance when Wyoming went to court to okay. start with. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because you realize that there was certain there were conflicts of interest. I remember the uh, Honorable Bartin Drew, who was a okay. Deputy Attorney General right. at the time, making a categorical statement that he thinks that Wyoming deserved the money. You understand? Whilst the uh, issues to do with the finance ministry at the time, because even when, I think it was Satekwe who was finance minister at the time. 2013. 2013, mm -hmm. where uh, he also had certain issues with it. It went back and forth. But he still went ahead and paid the money anyway. Johnny. Okay, so yeah, well, yeah, oh, you, you have a bite. Yeah, um, the, the assets which are requested now to be sold are two mansions at Trasaco Estate, a house at Pehe, a residential, an office at Anato of Anato Holdings, a residential building at Abeling Bay, and a stone quarry including its plants and equipment. That's what uh, uh, are going to be sold to defray the costs. Johnny, I, I am surprised that when I made references to the dubious and fraudulent Kelly GVG, he was uncomfortable. No, 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 please, please, please. Can I? He didn't go there. He didn't go there. So, no. so you no, don't go there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But if he wants to do that, I can also come here and list a plethora of examples. And there's no evidence of a dubious Kelly GVG. He didn't go there. Even when you raised it. Even when you raised it. Let's look at the fraudulent and TV that goes on in this government. But you see, but I wait, Johnny, from, I wait for me, please. Yeah, yeah. When you raise those matters, yeah. he raises his eyebrow, but he said nothing about it in his whole submission. So why do you want to go back to No, it? but the thing is that John, because he, he, he wanted to divert John, attention John, no, for me to John, not talk about what uh -huh. you mean. That's, and that is exactly oh, what he was trying why? to do. I, I, and he's been oh. able to let you actually okay. allow him John, to go on. I, no, 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 he's not going. I'm asking. I had the first bite. Now he's telling me that I wanted to divert attention so that he wouldn't talk about it. But that is, tell me GVG is not on the table. He's not on the table. And there's nothing that is going to a legal process. Eric, Eric, no, me. because he's here oh, exposing can you tell a personal, him to allow me to personal opinion what, about a deal. What personal now, if that is the case, you're a citizen of this country, what you can personal, take what, it what up. What personal opinion? Yes, but you can't bring your own no, subject what, from what the house and oh, ask us what, to discuss it. What personal it. opinion? We are having an intellectual discussion. Oh, but it's so, a very and then important so, so and intellectual that you move well from the program 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 that when you enter in some contractual agreement right. and there are breaches, mm. and then you told me, you asked me a question. Yeah. That cyber we, security, that's what you, No, doing. before even cy cyber, I'm mm. very conscious of the discussion. Maybe he has soon forgotten. Okay. And then you asked me a question. Mm. Why should we even, in the first place, and get engaged in contractual breaches? Right. If, and I said, look, official domain, I said mm. officials. Mm. And I was using that as an example okay. that you have an arrangement that has been entered into by government, which everybody, mm -hmm. civil society groups, and some members of the government have raised eyebrows about the clauses. And I said, when there are breaches of such clauses, naturally, people would want to go to happen. court. That was the reason. Mm -hmm. I don't think you expect me when I sit here, there should be a straight jacket discussion. That when you ask a question, don't, we, don't go anywhere, don't bring analysis, to let people understand okay. the point you had. Look, you see, Johnny, the, the issue, him the issue. Oh, why? I don't know. You don't know what he's going no. to say. So but it's a, you don't he know has what he's going to say. To say. You don't How? Know. Let's move on to the next. How? Thing. You don't know what he's going to say. He started by saying that I was I was uncomfortable on the issue of 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 women. Now he's he's demonstrating. So what, what that are you going you to see, say? You see, Johnny. The, the entirety of this women issue was in the first place the politicization of it by the NPP. Oh, How so? Yes. That. You remember why? No one was living in Kusumukaya. We're all living in Ghana. Your president says don't pay. I say we're all government officials pay. So I so The current president 
was a lawyer to the company, wrote to the NDC government to make payment on, on judgment day. So what are you talking about? So I'm saying that people raise issues and the over-politicization. What I expect him, once he was with Allah Christian admonishing me, that when we are looking at issues of corruption, issues mm. such as this, we should look at them in the lenses of apolitical. Mm. And I agree absolutely. Mm. But when you began politicizing an issue, How did I and then you started by issue? saying that William was an NDC person, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, when the same person engaged in several contracts under the NPP, mm -hmm. when the same person also publicly stated that leading members of your government at that time who were supported by him financially, when there wasn't a scintilla of evidence of the gentleman supporting the NDC in oh, the position. So I'm the, saying that of the, the gentleman supporting why? The money, the, you see, list. Do you, do you have any proof? You see, no, but exactly my point. No, so, so, I'm, saying, I'm saying, saying that William is not an NDC person. He is not. Really? Is he an NDC person? Was he an NDC, NPP person when he was having contracts to do with the NB, MPP? Is that what you are suggesting? The fact that a businessman get engaged in contractual arrangements and agreements and projects with the government makes him the person, the NDC person. Is, has he, he, is he a financier of the party? Financier? Was he a financier of MPP? No, I'm asking you. No, as far as he's not. Okay. How and Johnny, when Johnny, has he let's, suddenly, let's move on. How he and when has he suddenly become a financier of the, the NDC? And I'm saying that he had dealings with all political parties. Mm. Any businessman in this country can okay. engage in any contractual arrangement with any government. Okay. It doesn't matter. We have businessmen who were engaged in contract under the NDC who are still doing contracts with you. Mm -hmm. We had people who were engaged in contract under the MPP and the President Kufuor so who the had contracts. So the, the point, fact that the, the point gentleman is that you pay him money that is not doing him illegally, oh. even when it's been made okay. so. You want me to give a litany of example of such okay, that instructions have come from the president. The NDC, been, he said that instead I took the attorney. It's the NDC that took <laughs> Mr. Oyemi to court in the first place. That I give it for and on behalf of the state, and then it was left with judgment. Mind him, inform him. When it is left with judgment, there isn't any making of cases by the defense or even the prosecution system. It was left with judgment but when we he, had elections. He, I, so you want us to please, go there, please, but you want us to go there. At the time when but, but this allow, whole, let him also at the time when this whole way of issue, issue he allowed you came up, <laughs> you had the elements. You had a, 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 a deputy chief of staff mm -hmm. at the presidency. You had a man who later became a minister. Who said what? Who was defending? Defend well, they, they said you you over politicized. Yeah, it. but that is my point. I, I mean, but the point really is that I'm. This, it, it doesn't serve anybody's interest. Mm -hmm. Or even the ordinary Ghanaian citizen, mm -hmm. for me and Mutala to sit here and do a back and forth. As far as they are concerned, they want to know exactly how those monies that were paid illegally will be retrieved. That is the most important thing. As for the politics, especially coming from Mutala, it's extremely rich. When you put a, a subject matter on the table for us to discuss, and he finds a convenient escape but, but route. But it's Martin Ami. Martin says, Martin you know, did you know, he, he finds an, a convenient escape route. It's, it's Martin, just to it's escape Martin Ami did a special prosecutor who said that the Attorney General is not collaborating properly with him, even yeah. though he knows where Waterville is. Because the AG says we can't find Waterville. But Martin Amidu says I know where Waterville is and I can help you find them. And so is the Attorney it. General that's, that's not, not being no, willing. But, but, which I mean, is why the, you, court, you, the Supreme you, Court had now, to make that determination. You've not introduced another subject. No, it's that was the it. merit of the case in court which was ruled yes, on by but, Justice but this, this particular case has gone through the full processes. It's gotten to a point where a determination has been made. He is talking about what the so, so the, the, the fresh one, which uh, his, his lordship, that his lordship that justice were paid, but yes. Exactly. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. That You see, we can do this back and forth, back and forth. It also even serves as a lesson, or it should even engender some kind of policy conversation. Have we, around. Learned, have we learned from no, this? But we have to. We, have we? We're human. We, we, we are, we're, no, so, we we're, see, so that what I'm saying is mm. that even this whole Wyoming mm. thing should engender some direction in terms of even uh, stratus of um, let's say supervision for instance you go into uh, a contract mm. monies are going to be paid somebody makes a claim mm. the processes that it has to go through for that to happen now of course we give uh, uh, public officials a certain uh, if you like leeway mm. or uh, prerogative to be able to make some of these decisions right. but if you're essentially making a, dis a determination that you give somebody 50 million uh, CDs, for instance, mm -hmm. right? Then it has to go through a particular process. You know, there's all of these things that can come in 
so that we do not find ourselves in that particular situation again. But mm -hmm. nobody, anybody to sit here to try and countenance the uh, behavior of the administration at a time when Moe was giving the money, really okay. is doing a disservice to the people of this Who country. Deserves? And if he does that, I and want. now goes to bring a phantom... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Fraudulent. Uh, yeah, but that is your view. Criminal killing. And when you are, you are, you are actually two point two uh, brought to strict allow proof, allow strict proof, you will not be able to do so. Why have you, you been be able to? Why you won't be able to do, do so? Need, do you need a committee to come down to tell you that uh, that Kelly uh, GVG was a fraud? Do you they, need I have. Let me put the same question to you. Have we have we learned any lessons from all of this? Based on the conduct and misconduct of this administration, we haven't seemed to learn any lessons. We haven't. And that is why I was making references to the kind of contractual agreement that has been entered into. Have you heard of the Metro Mass fraud? Mm. That a bus that is the, sold, the a bus that is sold, which you can easily check on the website of that company to be $75,000. Mm. This government purchased same bus, same specs, $175,000. Come on. Yesterday, I listened to the Minister for Transport, and then he uh, said what? Uh, for Asia, right? He says that, look, there are other things that come in. Uh, you you buy the, the buses, insurance, importation, and, and other I mean, things. I don't that know come whether through. I should laugh or I should cry. Why should you laugh? When so, you so order, when, when you when can you import a car, don't you pay? Okay, let's even go. The insurance and those things are even more expensive than the car. Is that what you are suggesting? A car which is seventy five thousand dollars and insurance and co minini. It's over. It's about hundred thousand. Johnny, please, please, Johnny, please. Johnny, it's about hundred thousand dollars. You see, Johnny, uh, moderating uh, this program. You have allowed. He, no, no, allowed I'm asking if, if we have learned anything. Eric, is allow, allow me. Just be fair to him. Be fair to him. He will not say anything. Eric, oh, no, but it is not for you to determine. You know, he came me. here with a set of notes. Eric. This is what he has written down. Eric, what about is Eric? Agama, Agama Liza's no, uh, principle. Eric, actually, and that is going to... That's exactly what he's going to do. Eric, I have written... You see, but you see, I'll tell you something. Eric, allow me. Even, allow even, you know, I just... You had a chance to answer five seconds. He did, he did say... Have we let he did, he did say to me. Listen, five seconds. You ah. see, even this whole idea that it was an NDC government that activated the processes against uh, William, it's not true. Because it was Mr. Martin Amidu who went to court and activated that process. Which activation? Do you so, appreciate no, how prosecution no, 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 is done? You see, you see so, logic. No, no, what how, is the logic? Do you know how prosecution is done? If the Minister for is, Justice and Attorney General is, is unwilling, let me give you a classical no, no, example. No, that is let me give you a classical happened. example. Otherwise, then you allow it to Allow it to submit. Allow it to submit. Can you expect? Did you expect? Did you expect? Did you expect? Did you expect an Attorney General and a Deputy who all were of the view that Mr. Woyomi actually deserved to be paid that amount of men will not turn round and go through a process to prosecute him to okay, start. Can I have my No. Have okay. You understand? So all okay. of this is let, I remember, let him I remember the a question. situation where the, even Mr. Woyomi had a cause to complain that he was arrested uh, going oh. somewhere in a Rambo style mm. and everything. Mm. It was all a facade. It was. Okay. Thank and you. there was absolutely no commitment to actually bring the you matter see, the one, to a certain finality. Okay, thank you. Mutala, have we learned anything? The one Any who lessons? sent him the no, text no, no. message, for which reason he and Nestle Integer has done you great disservice. Why? Listen, every time... I'm asking if we have learned anything. Don't... Oh, am, I, am I talking go on then. the things or the... Uh, no, the, no. I asked you a question. I asked you, 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 ask you a question and then you I were on your feet. I was the question and then he... So he, finish he, answering he that then we can go there. I'm saying that we haven't. Okay. And that is why I have told you and gave examples of the reckless conduct of officials under this government, mm. which I can foresee, and many people can foresee, a possible judgment there. Okay. Because some of the contractual arrangements are so fraudulent mm. that, inshallah, when NDC comes to power in 2021, we would have to abrogate them because they, serve, they, 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 they do not have any benefit for the people of this country. It's just enriching certain entities for whatever reason. Are you, are so you, I'm saying that are you leading us into more judgment debt? Because if you are broken, well, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you are paying such amount of money that you think that it is not beneficial to the people of this country, mm -hmm. you weigh between abrogating such a contract and perhaps possibly challenging the legality of that contract in court, and hopefully that you may. Mm -hmm. And if you, you do you not, can you always do not. rework Johnny. the process in the contracts, oh, can't you? He, he's yeah. coming again. No, no, no. Eric, Eric, Eric hold up. Eric, hold up. Eric, Eric, hold up for him. I saw you taking something in your he car. He didn't I take it. No, I saw him. Please. I saw him taking progress. something in his car. That may be informing this. This is unusual. No, 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 that's not fair. That's not fair. Sorry. Apologize to him, please. No, I know. Go ahead. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm saying that. Why? 
the, 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 we haven't learned. If we have, I don't think that we'll be engaged in some of this. And someone just sent him a text. And then he comes in and says that, oh, the prosecution, it was Mr. Martin Amidu. Okay. The fact that Mr. Martin Amidu was talking about judgment debt is not in doubt. Mm. But I'm saying that it takes a government preparedness and willingness to prosecute. The Attorney General and the Minister of Justice is the only body mm. that has the authority to determine whether a case is prosecutable or not right. in court. Now, when we had the Delta Forces virtually lynching a, a judge, oh, your government was unwilling to prosecute that. <laughs> okay. It's just an example to tell you that. <laughs> you check the preparedness. So you <laughs> cannot <laughs> begin <laughs> to, to you keep widening the scope. Uh, why why Thank won't you. I widen the Thank scope? Thank you. No, he's 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 he won't allow you. 0202166633, that's our WhatsApp line. Join us and let's have a conversation. Now, page 16 of the uh, Ghanaian Times says the government is to focus on quality science, mathematics, and technology education. President Kufuado says the government... Uh, educational policies will focus more on improving the quality of science, mathematics, and technology education at the various schools throughout the country. According to him, the country's future prosperity depends largely on the quality of science and mathematics education and stressed the need to improve the teaching and learning of those subjects. Uh, Mr. President Kufuado said that uh, on uh, Tuesday earlier, when winners of the ZS National Science and Math Quiz called on him at the uh, Jubilee House in Accra. Eric, I, I come to you now. The, the conversation about ICT inclusion in our curriculum for basic schools, uh, second cycle schools, and even up to the university level, it's been on the books for about 10, maybe 12, 13 years. But we seem to be at a standstill where schools do not have electricity. We have seen teachers using stones to represent mouse mm -hmm. for the children. And every, every government, at least that I've seen over the last 12, 30 years, keeps talking about the fact that, oh, it is a priority area. We'll improve upon it. Nothing. We started this beautiful thing of ladies or girls in science and mathematics. I don't know how far we have gone with it. What is wrong with us as a country? We know what we want, mm -hmm. but we don't want to work towards it. Well, I mean, you, you can look at it from a, a half full standpoint or uh, a half empty standpoint. I think that we've made some strides. Um, I mean, you know that it's my, my field, so I have an understanding of right. even the diffusion rate, for instance, of, uh, of internet and the use of uh, mobile phones and all of those things that has essentially extended the frontiers where it ever used to exist um, in terms of using it or activating that within our educational system uh, maybe there's still a lot more to be done but i mean from the perspective of the president in terms of focusing on that it's essentially a no-brainer mm -hmm. like you're saying we've come to a point where even major industries are being disrupted. Uh, when I say disruption, you, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Even major yeah. industries are being disrupted. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we have a situation in the banking and financial sector where fintech now is a in thing. Uh, you have uh, hotel chains and mm -hmm. properties now. You have Airbnb, which is essentially the biggest hospitality chain in the world. Mm -hmm. You have Uber and all of those things. Now, all of those things are predicated on a solid um, maybe like <coughs> technological base. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I think that um, that is a step in the right direction. Right. Uh, it depends on even what we are teaching and be being able to harness the potential of mm -hmm. technology. Uh, the whole idea of the science, technology, and mathematics and engineering thing is also mm -hmm. feed our mm -hmm. industries where people would become adept at using uh, their hands and mm -hmm. be able to mm -hmm create things and uh, put things together, be more creative, and so that take it away from finishing university or tertiary education and expecting to, uh, uh, to be employed. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this thing that I'm wearing was made by somebody. Right. Hitherto, we used to call them tailors and seamstresses. Mm -hmm. Now they are designers. Designers, right? yeah. yeah. Because they, they're able to use technology to find new designs, mm -hmm. to sketch and all sorts of things so mm. it's it's all evolving so i think that um it's a step in the right direction are we making of course, the right commitment of course beyond the words of course you see when you look at it from a, a purely governance standpoint or like a, a, a government perspective you would always have uh challenges with that because i mean government has so many different 
priorities. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you say that, oh, yeah, because there's no uh, computer in this school or whatever. But then when you look at it from a certain general perspective, a lot of work has been done. There's been uh, commitment to uh, have the uh, fiber, the Ministry of Communication is now extending fiber, fiber optic, optic yeah. to various parts of the country. They have the rural telephony mm -hmm. uh, network that they're putting together. All these things has a way of actually enhancing the teaching of these things in our Are schools. you happy with the speed? We could, we, could be, we could be faster. Are you happy now, with the speed? We could, we, could, we could be faster. Are you happy with the speed? We could be faster than we have you, been. But we've also made you, you some giant... Question, we've also made some giant Are you happy with the speed? No, it is not up, up to me to say I'm happy or not. You no, are I'm the saying field, is, that's what I'm asking yeah, But that's what I'm saying, that there's also a <laughs> huge shift. I mean, so for instance, I mean, in my industry, in the last 15 years or so, there are things that exist today that did not exist right. before, right? And it, so the children themselves, even if not within a school setting, have now been able to uh, take some of these things mm -hmm. and they are more if like tech savvy than me and you. Okay. I remember that, I, I mean, I always say this as a joke. Until I went to England, I was about 20 or so, mm -hmm. I had never used a computer before. <laughs> you understand? But I have three-year-olds, four-year-olds who can go on and go on YouTube and, and, and do, do all, all sorts of everything. things. And, okay. uh, so that is really where we are. Mm. But my biggest challenge is how we'll be able to use that for even young people in rural areas, mm. from poor backgrounds, so that it's, we don't create a, a, a society where you have ones that have and that, those who die. Do, that do, is where, do you see equity, that is where, equity that's where government in the present module? Do no, you but, see but equity? You see, what I know for a fact that has been even done is that uh, I think that it was even President Kofo who started this where he had some model schools right. where you have schools in a particular catchment area. Mm -hmm. Because you see, we also have to be kind of that. So we have issues with resources. You know, so they created model schools where for like they have the, all mm -hmm. the state of the heart, uh, what do you call it, uh, laboratory equipment and everything, and then right. schools in that mm -hmm. catchment area will be able to use it. Right. So even when we do not have what it takes to do it for every single school, we can activate a model priority like that. Priority. Yeah, but you see, that's priority. I, like I don't see a lack of resource. I see uh, the willingness. And oh no, but but, but the thing is that but the thing is that the president is talking about it. Uh, this national science and math grades and all the things moving the polytechnics into technical universities, mm. focusing on that, adding the vocational and technical schools to the free SHS okay. uh, policy and all of, are all things that is meant to enhance. I mean, okay. I know that the GSS, Thank you. Thank you the new much. GSS policy was even meant to support this, right. where young people will be equipped with skills to go into the Is it, the, is the it in sync with our national plan, our national development plan? We can have that conversation all day. That is, that is where we should be going. <laughs> because if what you are teaching is not in tandem with what you want to achieve as a nation in the next 10, 15 years, then you are teaching a mess. So I'll come to you. Okay. Forgive me. Uh, Christoph, welcome. We have some comments coming in. Yeah. Uh, Hi, Johnny. Mutala's example was a good one. But to Buttress's point, Eric is not just feeling uh, comfortable from well, Sadat. Uh, <laughs> from Dr. Abedi Kwadaso, aka Police Ni Nejrono. Um, thanks to Supreme Court for concerning, for, con for cornering Woyeme's application for stay, for stay of execution dismissed and paving way for sale of assets. But what's happening in our country? 20 die in Upper East floods. Hmm. May God save us all. Hi to Reverend Samuel K. Mensa of Crow from CAC, Honorable Alexander Fenyo Markin, Honorable Evans Bobier, MP for Asunafo North, and Dr. Kingsley Nyako. Hi, CB3. The level of hypocrisy and mediocrity of this NPP government is so ab uh, abstruse. Uh, government and Martin Amidu are only interested in only Woyeme's case, pretending to be thinking, uh, pretending and thinking we've forgotten the PPA case, Ghana Maritime Boss case, the Ameri Deal case, the PDS to mention but a few. These are clear indication of abuse of power, but Ghanaians are not myopic. That's from Nazir in uh, Aflaum. Johnny, good morning. I think the SP is talking too much and Woyome should, um, should 
Guayame too should keep quiet and pay the money. Whether we will pay in installments or not is not our business. Uh, all that we want is our money. Good morning to Comrade Mutala King Oruma from uh, Adenta you know, or Yarifa says. Good morning to you and your panelists. I knew Mutala would definitely switch to another topic when he knows uh, he can't uh, defend the topic given to him. When they paid the huge amounts to their party financier and if not Martin Amidu, the states would have lost this huge sum of money and he's here talking uh, taking credits for prosecution. Posterity uh, will judge them and their cheap propaganda. Uh, that's from saying Yameche inside the GISO. Johnny, let Mutala know that NDC never secured judgment in court on the case of Woyome. Rather, it was citizen vigilante uh, Martin Amidu, who stars Abdul Karim. That's from Saboba. Good morning, TV3. Good morning, Ghana. Ghana is bleeding of super incompetence by the Nana Ado's um, government. His ministerial setup is an exposure and a clear indication of how incompetent the president has shown his incompetence in governance. Contradictions, uh, multiplicity of ministerial objectives, etc. Ghana is bleeding under Nana Ado's government. That's from Koklovi Dabala. Kofi Kumasi uh, says, I don't know how to describe Nana Ado's government. Eric, too, is talking about corruption. Well, those are our comments from this morning. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, take on this one. Then we'll look at the Upper East Flats quickly. We'll well, to first, 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 just about eight first, minutes. Like, like I said, it is very clear that the kind of policies we formulate as a country has always been the problem. And I was happy when you drew the attention of Eric and, of course, all of us to whether we have a national development plan. Mm. Look. I would want to repeat what Plato said. I have said it here time and time and again, and I'll continue you know, making references to Plato's. Plato was an anti-democracy, and he postulated that society can only change if leaders become philosophers or philosophers become leaders. leaders. Because it is very clear. We have a National Development Plan Commission. They did an elaborative and an outstanding national <coughs> development plan. When MPP won elections in 2016, Dr. Ni Moy Thompson, yes. who was the chair right. of the commission, submitted their report to His Excellency but the President. But that has been in existence since No, no, no. They have, we've always said they, they did a 40-year 40, 40 40 40 plan. plan. Dr. Thompson when they submitted years. it to His Excellency the President, the President said that this was, that it was the most comprehensive an excellent national development plan that he has ever seen. This was what President Nanadu said. When they submitted the, the document to him at the Flagstaff House, and mind you, he would have read or gone through the document mm. before even the day that they met to submit the copy right. symbolically mm. to him. What happens? He has thrown it somewhere. You can't uh, oh, yes, sure. you can't be sure. Why? Why? Not, not Allah, 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 He has thrown but it you somewhere. Can't be sure. No, 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 no. He has thrown it somewhere, and the government communication itself is that they are going to have another plan. True. That, who, who came up with oh, that please. communication? You see, you don't seem to be aware what happens around your government. No, but but I, I don't blame you. The president himself doesn't seem to know what happens oh, around him. But yes, it's no, true. Who said that? Listen, we are going listen, to do listen, Eric, Eric, listen. allow him Eric, to make it. Now, if they haven't thrown it, if they haven't thrown it somewhere, if they haven't thrown that document somewhere, where is it? And you see, when I made the earlier statement, I was not even reducing it to NPP. I just cited this example because they did a 40-year development plan. Right. And the president himself, mm. I don't think he was any, under any compulsion to make the kind of statements he made mm. that haven't gone through it and as a lawyer of, 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 of standing, mm. he went through the document and he was convinced that it was. What happened? You see, Eric, you, uh, uh, Johnny, you cannot be talking about changing the development paradigm if you don't change the kind of policies you formulate. Now, the JHS system, was introduced for a purpose. Right. Are they happening? The purpose fact, for introducing it. The purpose, go, the purpose for introducing it, Johnny. Audit. The purpose was that at least people would have been equipped with some skill training. Mm -hmm. And I was happy when he made references to what he's wearing. Look, I wear this. Everything, the material, the sewing, everything was done by hand. Now, do we have a policy that is geared towards assistance search? How many Ghanaians are willing to wear made in Ghana? Mm -hmm. Look, I have always said that I need to comment the current Minister for Trade and Industry for having introduced the wearing of Made in Ghana mm -hmm. on Fridays at the Ministry of Trade. When we came, my boss, Dr. Spilgabra, we took it a step further. Mm -hmm. At the Ministry, we're not only wearing Made in Ghana on Fridays alone, we're wearing Made in Ghana every single day in this country. Mm -hmm. Go and check the textile industry. 
that you have Chinese product that have evaded the market, that is defeating our basic skill. The textile industry was not, not only creating jobs, mm. but once you have an industry that is buoyant, mm. people will be able to engage in it. You know, when we talk of, 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 of specialization, cost, cost, specialization cost, cost, people cost, begin to learn. Cost. Now, you go to those technicals, what happens? Polytechnics were instituted to give us a new shape mm. of development, to train a new class or crop of technical people who would augment the theory that myself and you and many other people have learned in the universities. Mm -hmm. What happens to the polytechnics? We upgraded the polytechnics into, to universities now. Go to the polytechnics, they run social science courses. They run human, 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 you know, uh, uh, arts courses, humanities, that's what they run. So I'm saying that it, it takes a political will. But that's what the president it says, takes, I will do. He says, we will focus on it. He's a, he's a talking president. No, how? I mean, and I'll tell you that he's a talking president. Please, please. Hold on, hold on, please, hold on, please. Hold on, are you uncomfortable? The NDC with, can I, can left I make power me? just about three years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this whole issue about refocusing on the STEM is a conversation that has been had for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now, for him to sit here and it creates a certain impression that all of a sudden there were some um, what systems or processes that were put in place yes, that was were. working and that this government has come and uh, jettisoned you want me it. To tell you. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's not, it's not true. It's true. Now, even when we, 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 we instituted a free SHS policy, we added the technical uh, uh, not schools that you together. Added. The president we, The vocational schools no. were added. What has happened? The there? Greek. Uh, what has uh, happened? Uh, the budget uh, for colleges. those institutions. So colleges were added abuse. to it, right? Now, you can have issues. I mean, the thing is that we can have this conversation without personalizing it. We personalizing. Then, you see, I mean, when we you talk can, about no, 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 you see, we can have this conversation without personalizing Allah, Allah, it. Because, you know, you've you had see, your chance on, the, on also, the technological conversation. It is also imperative for you. I'm not teaching you your job. But you have to ask Mutala. What was done differently? I'll tell you what. Under the award, and it's been done differently. Should I have brought us back? This is what we do. When we, when we do the back and forth, and that's why no, I'll me, tell you. I, was no, but because I was happy to ask you. I was happy to ask you Johnny. how we are connecting what we Johnny. teach in school to our national plan. Mm -hmm. If what we teach in school doesn't feed into the national plan, the national vision we want to achieve, we are wasting our but time. Johnny, share, let me just share, tell him. Let me give you. Let me just tell him one example of what President Muhammad did, which you have failed. Okay. The fact that the President Muhammad did, one, 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 one laptop that is missing that we can't find. Which one? We can't find the laptop. You mock it. The fact that the fact that President Muhammad saw the need for us to have a comprehensive national development plan, which indeed he takes a team of eminent and outstanding individuals to do, mm. and for which reason they submitted the report to this president, and the president not under any compulsion, mm. himself stated that this was the most comprehensive and effective national development plan he has ever seen, yet thrown that to the dogs. That is a problem. You can't be sure. You, you know, I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard Mr. S. S. L. Kufu, Mr. S. L. Kufu say that children are going to get laptops and, and uh, voilà. uh, tablets when and all of that. When the NBC was given laptops, given free school uniforms mind you the, the the shoes that were produced to be distributed to needy Most students this morning, Please, you've been the shoes very, can i finish can i finish the shoes the, 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 the school uniforms the, all the all shoes the that were produced and distributed you know those who were producing so them. shoe is science now you know the, you know you know those who <laughs> were producing shoe them. is science for you. you see i just told you for you to specialize wow. okay when you have people who are impacted with some technical skill right training and those people, after you know, acquiring the skill, okay. are not able to use the skill into any proper use. What happens? They will abandon it. Right. So if you have people who were focused on producing such shoes mm -hmm. in Ghana, mm -hmm. that you come, you have abandoned it, you mocked some of the interventions that the NBC mm -hmm. and anytime you sit it's with them, they tell you that we, mention okay. one social Coming intervention program. What happened? Yes. What happened? Yes, because because yes it's mean, important. Very, very He's run away from Dr. Dr. Clement Apa. Good, good morning to you. Sorry about <laughs> what's happening in your constituency, but uh, 20 people have died in the Upper East floods. Death toll could rise, that's what we've been told, and heavy rains for eight. Uh, continuous days have caused havoc in the Upper East region as a number of people have lost their lives while many others have either been displaced or injured. Uh, already 20 people have been confirmed dead with 19 also injured while some 
1,550 houses have also been destroyed in the process across the 15 districts of the region. Uh, there's a portion of the bridge in the Bosa North District which connects Jansa and neighboring communities to San Dema, the district capital, have also been washed away. And there are indications that the death toll and the number of houses damaged could rise as the Upper East Regional Office of Natmo is still collating figures. Eric. Farmlands have been destroyed. It's <laughs> extremely sad. Um, I'll send my heartfelt condolences to the bereaved families and uh, hope that the good Lord will keep them. Uh, it's extremely terrible. And I mean, it's an act of nature. And um, I don't know if there's anything that you could have done to prevent it. But I expect that uh, Nadbo, I heard the upper deputy regional minister mm. this morning saying that um, the rains have subsided a little bit and they're hoping that if it doesn't come, they'll be able to uh, contain the situation. But if it does rain, then they will need to get some kind of uh, support from uh, elsewhere. Uh, and so I think that we should probably should not even wait for that to happen. We should make sure that the support is available to help alleviate the uh, terrible circumstances that uh, brothers in the Upper East uh, mm -hmm. are going through is terrible, but uh, I think that the state can do something to uh, alleviate the situation and support uh, the region to be able to uh, come back to its uh, normal normalcy. Could, could we as a country, knowing the topography of, of that space, have done if, for example, some say if we are down the one district, one dam, we could or have, you know, an irrigation dam or something to collect the volumes of water that come because it is sliding that way. We could have saved a lot of these lives. Could we have done that? I, you know, there's even this perennial thing that happens where the Bagri Dam is, uh, yes, is yes. left open. And I, I don't know. I won't sit here and pretend to be an expert, an engineer, mm -hmm. an expert. But... I mean, anywhere in the world, everywhere in the world, even with the most advanced countries in the world, they do have issues. Now, one is nature. It's, it's nature. There's not much you can do about it. The difference is how you react, how you're able to put together systems to make sure that it doesn't uh, cause wanton uh, distraction and a lot more people do not lose their lives. And then the people who have lost property and do not have shelter and everything are given at least some... Uh, mm -hmm. decent uh, uh, shelter and accommodation mm -hmm. for the time being to be able to, to move on. So that is really, for me, okay. uh, the most important thing. But do, do we have that evacuation centers in this country? We don't. No, we don't uh, have evacuation uh, uh, centers. I remember well, in 2015 when the June 3 disaster came, I said that if we had an evacuation center around the Nkrumah Circle area, people wouldn't have gone to the filling station to have been killed. And we have not learned from this as a country well, we don't I mean, have the evacuation uh, centers. We I, watch I American movies. You've lived in the UK. You will get to an evacuation center or a, a home, and you find warm meals. You find blankets. You find food. You find there's everything there. You even find counselors. We don't have it here. We're just well, living. I, I mean, again, I mean, I think that uh, these are things that should be everywhere. Uh, we should have some processes or protocols when disaster that's happened. There's NADMO. Uh, I'm sure they can speak to that. Uh, I know that for I, every... I think that NADMO is not effective. Uh, but, but, it's but been over-politicized, it's, it's not effective. See, they, can, they can speak and to I'm, that. And I'm upbeat about this, Eric, because let's, let's cut the chase. NDC MPP have had to politicize who gets into NADMO, and that's backward. Where you have lived before in the UK, uh -huh. emergency response team is never politicized. Well, you get people who have paramilitary training who get in there, who can save the lives of people. In 2015, I saw NADMO officials who couldn't swim to save their own lives in a small water circle. They were the ones distributing gloves to the people who were selling carpet there to go and rescue people. And I can say this on authority any day. Well, I, so we should stop politicizing NADMO. We get party boys, party girls, and we pack them in there, and we give them reflectors and hard hats and boots and they go and share rice, oil, mattress. That's... <laughs> well, Johnny, I, I, I don't know if that is the case at NADMO as we speak. But Sometimes again, they share expired case, food. There's a case for uh, proper training. There's a case for 
the right personnel to go in there to have the requisite set of skills and everything. I will not challenge that. But what I'm saying is that they would have their own set of protocols. I'm sure that every region, they would have areas that are zoned, they would know what the disaster prone areas are and all of those things. All that we would entreat is that we act with a bit more dispatch and so that we prevent more people from losing their lives. Okay. Ojala, I, I see you are a bit of underwhelmed about this, uh, no, this matter. I can't believe that this age and time in this country, and it hurts. 20 people, and you see, if you know those areas, take heart. Take heart. They, it's sad, and I, I, I think that, you, you know, know. For how many days now? The Poverty is, is endemic. Poverty is endemic in that area. Right. And if you care to know the statistics, 90% of the people in that area can't make an annual income of 90 Ghana cities. What has happened? What has happened? 20 people have lost their lives. And I don't want to do politics with this. I just want to say that, for me, this, this, this is a scar on us as a people. Now, even if this thing had happened in areas where people can afford, mm. that is different. Happens in people, if you listen to some of the stories, it's so harrowing that nothing seems to, to be happening. Why? Let me have a two seconds monologue. Mr. President, good morning to you. And in 2015, when the June 3 disaster broke, I was with you at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, along with ex President Mahama, along with Sami Ayaba Nkrumah, and many others. And you all made a pledge. That we're going to look at NADMO all over again. Nothing has changed. Elsewhere, in civilized countries, the democracies that we're trying to copy or emulate, they have the emergency response team as part of, say, their fire service, their military. And even back in school at Accra Academy, our cadet was trained by the 48 engineers in emergency response training. Now, fast forward to 2019, and we're still doing these things as if we don't have a clue. In any case, if we, have, we don't have the template, we do watch American movies, don't we, Mr. President? Don't we see these evacuation centers that they have? Show me where the evacuation centers are, Mr. President. And yet we have a minister for gender, children, and social protection in this country. We have a minister for interior in this country. And we do not have these requisite stuff. I remember that in 2015, after the June 3 disaster, or maybe in 2016, some 16 parks were named as evacuation centers in Accra. Today, as we speak, they have all been converted into AstroTurf parks. That's good. We want to develop football. But what if disaster strikes? People who live in low-lying areas are always told to move to high, high areas or whatever it is. So if my home is washed away and I don't have an alternative, you're asking me to go to a higher ground, whose house am I going into? We need to rethink some of these things again, Mr. President. And if the people really matter to you, sir, I hope that we find an answer to it and we stop putting party boys and girls in that position. Sharing rice, oil, and mattress and blah, blah, blah is not the solution to this problem. Because really, if my kitchen has been washed away and you're giving me rice and oil, where do you expect me to cook it, Mr. President? This is a backward way to look at things. And I hope that we really, really, really pay attention to it. Because it is not just the Upper East region. We have had the background, and like Eric has mentioned, like we all know. And for many years, we know what the problem is. The, Ivory, the Burkina Bays would tell us that they are going to open their dam to let the water flow. We hear it every time. Farms are destroyed, uh, livestock die, homes are washed away, roads are messed up. We know it. But when will we have the gonads of steel? to construct a dam that will receive the water. I'm not happy, Mr. President, and I don't think you're happy as well. Johnny, Johnny. The people yes, voted for you. The people are expecting things. you, Mr. President, to show leadership and vision. The people are expecting that you save their lives. They are counting on you, and they are the voiceless. Mr. President, good morning to you, and I hope that we find answers quickly. Johnny, one week. You know, yesterday I listened to, I listened to the, one of the officers at, at Nadmo, and he said that, look, when issues like that happen, it has to, we need to take a, get a report, mm. a report either from the district or from the region. And I said, wait a minute, a report? When the media have actually reported that several people have lost their lives. Mm. Now, is, it, is there not, not a case 
that even before the so-called report comes, there is a direct intervention. How more heartless can we be? One week. Look, and it is not because it is in Upper East. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm not from Upper East. If it happens anywhere, mm -hmm. we should be ashamed of ourselves as a people. That 20 people have lost their lives. Lives that could have been averted. Mm -hmm. And the possibility of more lives being lost is imminent. And when we made reference to Pualugu Dam, this is something that happens every yeah. single year. Mm -hmm. Now, why wouldn't I say that Plato was right when he said that society can only change when leaders become philosophers or philosophers become leaders. And sometimes you get extremely hurt that we sit any time on radios and TVs. Yes, we do our politics, but when it matters mm. about this, I think that we should all feel ashamed as a people. There is no any excuse. If not more, they don't have the needed resources. They ought to let the people of this country know mm. that, look, we don't have resources to be able to tackle that. Mm. There could be other organizations. TV3 can decide that we want to mobilize resources mm. to be able to do that. How much are we spending on other if you consider very irrelevant activities in this country, yet people's lives are being lost and nothing is being done about it. Okay. Eric, thank you very much. Uh, Eric Chum is a member of the NPP's communication team and Comrade Mutala Mohammed is an aspiring member of parliament for the Tamale Central constituency. He's been here on the ticket of the NDC.